uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. So before I begin, I hope you prepare your Casio class with calculator or emulator for this webinar, since we will be using that a lot today. And uh, uh, it is also best if you have downloaded Casio Edu Plus app in your cell phone. Okay. So why is class with calculator an an effective alternative tool in teaching mathematics in a distance learning setup. Because number one, it is one of the basic ICT that does not require or may not require internet connection. So it is applicable to any modality. So the only time that you'll need internet, internet connection is when you are concerned with graphs. So let's say you will graph uh, equation with you'll graph equation or let's say histogram or scatter plot. So I'll give examples later. Okay. Um, number two, so since computation is easier with class ways, then we mathematic, mathematics teachers can maximize this opportunity by constructing questions, especially word problems, that promote higher order thinking skills of our students. So we should always remember that our goal in math is to develop problem solving and critical thinking skills of our students. And finally, class with calculator has some features of a graphing calculator. So that is what we'll explore today. So, so yung mga uh, features of Casio calculator that are applicable for uh, senior high school and junior high school mathematics. All right. Okay. So in total, so the Casio class with has 12 features or 12 uh, menu functions. And given this 12, we will apply nine. Okay. So we will start with calculate. So for calculate, so just take note also that the corresponding number, so ito po yung ipepress natin kapag gagamitin natin, number or letter. Okay? So let's proceed to calculate. Yeah. So for calculate, one application is when you do conversion. So assuming you will convert 40 degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So how can we use the Casio classes in converting this one? All right. So I'll show you here the steps. So again, I mentioned a while ago that this is applicable to any modality. So whether you are applying or you will be using online class, so pwede po kayong gumamit ng emulator. And if you will going or if you're going to use module, then you can just indicate the steps that the students can follow. All right. So again, so we will convert 40 degrees Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So we will just follow these steps. So using the emulator, we will key in 40 and then we press shift. And then 8. So if you could notice, dun sa 8 button may nakalagay sa taas na conversion. And then we will look for the appropriate option, which is temperature. And then press 2. And then we press the equal sign. All right. So meaning to say the 40 degree Celsius is equal or equivalent to 104 degree, 104 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. So you can try this one. Once the students already know how to use this conversion uh, feature of a calculate, then probably you can give a more difficult problem or a word problem just like this one. So if I may read, so the speed of the car used by Rainier is 54 kilometers per hour, while the car used by Rafael travels 12 meters per second. So which car is faster? How much faster in meters per second? So. Uh, the student should realize, alin ba dito yung i-convert? Is it the 54 kilometers per hour or the 12, me 12 meters per second? So since you have the second question automatic, the students should know that the first one, the 54 kilometers per hour, should be converted to meters per second. All right. So again, using the calculator or the emulator, so we will type 54 and then shift 8 for conversion and then we we'll look for velocity so that's button one and then we press one again and then equal sign that's it okay so meaning to say Rainier's car is faster than Raphael's car by uh, three meters per second okay so I just hope you can follow Second, so another application of the calculate men uh, menu of the class with is when you do random sampling. So for example, in a class of 40 students, you will choose nine students at random who will participate in an activity. So you will use the class number of the students. But if I may, I, I do not recommend this 
um, as a replacement for index card, especially kapag yung iba gumagamit ng index card sa, ano, sa recitation. Kidding aside, so let's proceed. So here is the uh, steps that we can follow. So we will press alpha and then dot. Then we input 1 to 4. So 1 and then yung comma nasa close parenthesis button. So we will press first shift, close parenthesis, and then we input 40. And then close parenthesis. And then we'll just press equal sign nine times. So 6, 10, 18, 8, 20, Two. So, press lang po sa equal sign. There you go. Okay. Next, another application of the calculate menu or uh, calculate feature. So, we can also do evaluating functions. So, let's try number one. So, we will input x minus 3 all over to x minus 5. So we will press first the fraction button. So x button is below on. So x minus 3. And then we press arrow down to input x or 2x minus 5. And then once done, we will press calc to input the value for x, which is 4. So just press 4. And then equal sign twice there you go okay so the value is one third so you can try number two on your own okay so that we can proceed next one so still in evaluating function you can actually do or you can actually evaluate two functions at a time so that is when parehas lang yung value ng x so for this so we will input the first expression, yung x squared minus 2x plus 3. And then we will input colon. So colon is on the integral sign button. So yun nasa taas po. And then the font color is red. So meaning to say we need to press first alpha. Okay. So we input x squared. So x and then square minus 2x plus 3, alpha, and then the integral sign button, and then second expression, so 3x exponent 3, and then move, then minus 9. Then again, we will press calc and input 5. Then finally, we press equal sign. So that's the first, or that's for number three. And then that's for number four. So 18 and then 366. I, ho I hope you can follow. Okay, so once the students already know how to do that, so pwede na po siyang i-apply sa uh, word problem. So let's say we have this given problem. It says, Ivy and Rick have a joint savings account. So every end of the month, Ivy saves 1,000 pesos and Rick saves 15% of his monthly net income. So if Rick's net income this month is 20,521.35 pesos, so how much could they deposit in their account this month? So you can ask your students to construct the equation and then after which they identify the answer to the problem. Okay. So let's try. So that will be 0 0.15x plus 1,000. And then press calc. Then we input the value for x, which is 20,521.35. Then press again the equal sign twice. And pop. Okay. So that means that they could save 4,078.20 pesos uh, this month, all right? 
Another application, so we can also solve equation with one unknown in calculate menu or function. So assuming we have this given uh, problem, so the sum of three consecutive even numbers is 432. So what is the, lar the largest number? So assuming that the smallest number is represented by x. So therefore, the second number is x plus 2 and the largest even number is x plus 4. Okay. So getting the sum, so we'll have the equation 3x plus 6 is equal to 432. So we need to input this equation, 3x plus 6 x equals 432 in the calculator. So how can we do that? So we first input 3x plus 6. And then we press alpha calc for the equal symbol. And then we input 432. And then we press shift, calc, and then equal sign. So kapag equal sign lang po yung pinindot natin, mag -e error po siya. So you have to press first shift and then calc. Okay? So since the value of x is 142, then it means that the largest number is 146. So that's it. So you can also apply this concept in solving problems in geometry. So let's say in a parallelogram A, B, C, D, so the measures of angles A and B are given. So to solve for this problem, the students should realize that angles A and B are consecutive angles. Thus, they are supplementary or their measures are supplementary. And then so to compute for angles C and D, so the students should know that angles A and C angles B and D are opposite angles. So when we talk about opposite angles in parallelogram, uh, they are congruent or the measures are equal. So you can also apply that here. Okay, so another application, you can also apply that method in solving compound interest. Let's say you are teaching business math, just like me, okay? So let's say in compound interest, we have this given problem. So basically to solve for uh, the compound amount, we use this formula. But in this given problem, the unknown is the time, okay? So to solve for the time, what we, or what I often do is we formulate or we uh, derive the formula for time, okay? Using the concept of logarithm. But using the calculator, adding yung uh, compound amount formula na lang po yung gagamitin natin. So how can we do that? So again, since the compound amount is 500,000, so we input 500,000, alpha calc for the equal symbol, and then the principal or the present value is 350,000, open parenthesis, then we press 1 plus, the annual interest rate is 12%, so that's 0 0.12 over 12, that's the conversion period, uh, not 12, but 4 since quarterly, the conversion period is quarterly, raised to... Yan. So again, conversion period of 4 multiplied by 2 years. Ay, 2 years. Unknown pala. So for, since the time is the unknown, so we can just use x for this. So shift, calc, and then equal sign to solve for x or for the time. So approximately, it will take 3 years for Shani to accumulate 500,000 pesos. Okay, next. So let's use or let's apply or explore the complex function or complex menu. So from the menu button, you press and then press 2. So let's try number 1. So open parentheses. So negative 10 plus 2. I is on ENG button. Yan. So plus, open parenthesis, 4 minus 3, I again is on ENG button, and then close parenthesis. And then we just press the equal sign. Okay. So that's the answer to number 1. So you can just try numbers 2 and 3 for this. Okay. Next. So let's proceed to statistics function. So let's try to work on this one. So it says in the problem that a company with 6 departments 
has 20, 25, 31, 15, 9, and 11 employees with an equal semi-monthly salary of 7,000 pesos, 6,800 pesos, 7,400 pesos, etc. Okay, so we look for the average semi-monthly salary of all employees of the company. So using the calculator, so we have here the steps. So we press menu and then 6 for statistics and then we press one for one variable and then since we have or we need frequency then we press shift menu arrow down we look for statistics so that's button three and then on the frequency by pressing one and then now we can input the values okay so for x we'll start with seven thousand and then 6,800 equal sign, 7,400 equal sign, and then 8,150 equal sign, yeah. and then 9,100 equal sign, and then 7,500. And then after which, we can just use the arrow button. Yeah. So for 7,000, so the frequency is 20. Then we have 25, 31, equal sign, 15, equal sign, 9, equal sign, and then 11. Okay. Okay, so now once you're done encoding all the values, so next step is we press option. So yung nasa baba po ng shift button. So once you press that button, you will see the following options. So yung one that will allow you to select type. So just make sure that uh, when you press this one, yung options na susunod nyo pipinutin is one pa rin. Otherwise, mabubura yung mga in-input natin kanina. Okay? And then two, editor, this will let you erase the data encoded or uh, insert another row. Okay? And then for three option or third option, one variable calculation. So this will give you all possible values for statistics. And finally, for statistics calc will allow you to compute for each value one at a time, okay? So we will be applying or we will use the fourth button, the fourth option, okay? Since we only need the mean. So let's continue. So from here, we press option and then four for statistics calc. And then we press again option, arrow down. Then we look for variable. So that's using button two. And then we press one for the mean. And finally, we press equal sign. Okay. So the mean monthly or the mean semi-monthly salary of all employees is 7,441.89 pesos. So I hope you can follow Next application, so aside from mean, we can also compute for the following, the median, the first quartile, the quartile deviation, the standard deviation. So how can we do that? So from the value of the mean, we press AC and then option and then yung two, one variable calc. So nandiyan po lahat ng values na kailangan natin. So for the median... So you can just use arrow down. Median is 7,400. And then first quartile, 7,000. And then for the quartile deviation, so you get the average of the third and first quartile. So 7,500 minus the 7,000 divided by 2. So that's 250. And then for the standard deviation, so just make sure that you know kung ano yung hinahanap nyo. Is it the population standard deviation or the... Uh, sample standard deviation okay next so we can also identify or we can also construct histogram of the given data so this is the time that you need the casio edu plus up or ito yung kailangan natin ng internet connection okay so again we press ac and then option so we will go back to the encoded data and then we press shift 
and then option for the QR code. Yan. So all you need to do is to scan the QR code using the Casio Edu Plus app. And then, so kapag na-scan nyo na po yung QR code, so using this one, so ito na po yung magiging graph. Okay? Next one. So let's try normal distribution. So how can we identify the area under the standard normal curve of the following? So let us just try letter A. So normally, to solve for this one, we need uh, a z-distribution table. But using Casio class, we hindi na natin to kailangan. Okay? So how can we solve using class with calculator? So first, we press menu. And then six again for statistics. And then one for one variable. So na wala na po yung ginawa natin kanina. So it's okay. Then we press again, option. And then we choose four. So press again the option button. And then arrow down. So we look for normal distribution. That's button four. Yan. Okay. So if you could notice, we have here four options. So one, two, three, four. P, Q, R, and then T. So... We will use one button to find the area to the left of Z. Two, if we will identify the area between 0 and C. Three, if we will identify the area to the right of Z. So to easily illustrate that one, ito po yung example niyan. Okay? So meaning to say for letter A, we will use button one since we need to identify uh, the area to the left of Z. Okay, so let's continue. So we press 1. And then we input the value 1.63. Close parenthesis. And then equal sign. Yeah. Okay. So ibig sabihin, uh, the, the area is 94.85%. Okay. Now, let's try that in a word problem. So, if I may read, so during GCQ, a commuter waits an average of 30 minutes before boarding a bus with a standard deviation of 8 minutes. So, assuming that the time is normally distributed, so what is the probability that a commuter waits for more than 40 minutes? So, recall that for this one, we need to convert first the raw score into z-score, yung using this formula, okay? So to compute for this one, let us just use the calculate menu. So we have 40 minus 30. Okay, press right button, 8, and then equal sign. So that's 5 fourths or 1.25, okay? So that's the equivalent z-score or z-value. Then we go back to statistics menu. So press 6 or menu and then 6, 1, option, and then 4, statistics calc, and then we press again option and then we look for the normal distribution button, which is 4. Okay. So more than 40 minutes, so meaning we will use button 3, and then we input 1.25, yan, and then equal sign. Okay. So yan po. So, the probability that the commuter waits for more than 40 minutes is 10.57%. Okay. Next one. Still under statistics. So, another application is in correlation and regression. So, let's try to input this first, the values. So, from the menu button, we press again 6. And then this time, we press 2. Yeah. And then since we have we still have here frequency, so i-off lang po muna natin. So we press shift, menu, and then arrow down, statistics. So that's button 3. And then press 2 to off the frequency, to turn off the frequency. Okay. So we now input the values for x. So 2, 3. So just press the equal button for each value. 7. Okay, and then just use the arrow button to move the cursor. So for Y, we have 600, 750, 
Yan po. 800. Next. 1,200. 1,300. And finally, so we have 1,550. Okay. Next. So we will now identify the value of the correlation coefficient that shows the strength of linear relationship between the two variables. And then we will also construct the line of best fit relating the years of work experience and daily rate of employees. So to solve for these two, padding isang uh, one computation only using the calculator. Pwede rin naman na isa-isa. Okay. So let's continue. So we press option and then we can just press four. Okay. So when you press four, nandito na po yung correlation coefficient, which, which is equal to 0 0.98. Th that shows a strong positive uh, relationship between the two variables. And then for the line of best fit, that is y caret or y is equal to 159.05 plus 194.29x. Okay. Naman po yung ano yung yung isa isa lang iko compute okay so again from the encoded data so we press option arrow down press one for statistics calc press again the option then arrow down press four for regression so let's compute for r so by pressing three and then equal sign ayan Then press option again, look for regression for, and then this time we compute for A. So by pressing 1, and then equal sign. Okay. And then for B, so press again for 2, press 2 for B, and then equal sign. Ayan po. Okay. So it's your choice kung alin po yung gagamitin nyo dito sa dalawa. Next, so let us estimate the daily rate of an employee who has 10 years of work experience. So since we already have the data and then uh, the line of best fit, pwede po diretso na lang siya i-compute sa calculator. So here's the step. So we input first 10 and then press option, arrow down, regression. So press 4 and then press 5. Finally, the equal sign. Okay. So, estimately, uh, the, daily, the daily rate of an employee who has 10 years of work experience is 2,101.90 pesos. Okay? And finally, we can also construct a scatter plot of the data. So, parang yung ginawa lang din po natin kanina, we will scan the QR code using the Casio Edu Plus app. Okay? So, we press option 1. Two. Okay. Shift. Option. Yan. And then we scan the QR code. Po. Okay. And so this will be the graph or the scatter plot of the data. Okay. Next one. So let's proceed to distribution function or menu. So assuming we have this given problem. Okay. So you press menu. And then this time, we will use 7 button or the 7th button. Yan po. And then we press 2 for normal cumulative distrib distribution. So the lower value is 36. The upper value is 40. Yan. And then standard deviation. Since the given is the variance, then we get the square root of... 4.8 and enclosed by parentheses, then equal sign. Then for the mean, so we have 38.5, then equal sign. Yeah, okay. So that's the value. Okay, so we have 62.63. percent okay 
another application of the distribution. So this is the reciprocal of what we did a while ago in the uh, statistics menu or function. Okay, so let me read. So during GCQ, a commuter waits an average of 30 minutes before boarding a bus with a standard deviation of 8 minutes. So assuming that the time is normally distributed, so find the maximum time of waiting of the lowest 10% of the commuters. Okay, so since we'll be doing the opposite, so this time around, we will identify the raw score. Okay. So we press menu 7 and then 3 for inverse normal. So the area is 10% or 0 0.1. Since we are following normal distribution, then the standard deviation is 1 and the mean is 0. Then we press equal sign. Okay. So the value or the corresponding z-score is negative 1.28. Okay, so since this is the value or the Z value or Z score, then we can now compute for the raw score. So for this, pwedeng sa calculate na lang po natin siya i-compute. Okay. So moving on, let's proceed to spreadsheet. So that is menu 8. So assuming we want to identify the following. So let's start with A. So how much is the monthly payment? So for the given problem, the value of or the present value, A, is 65,000 pesos. And the unknown is the monthly payment or R. Okay. And then I here is the periodic rate, which is computed by dividing the annual interest rate R by the conversion period uh, for one year, M. Okay. So meaning to say that will be 12% or 0 0.12 divided by 12. And then for N, that is M times T. So M is the conversion period. So again, that is 12. And then T is two years. Okay. So let's compute using Casio Classwis. So we use the calculate menu. So we input 65,000, then input equal sign by pressing alpha calc. And then we will represent R or the monthly payment by X. Open parentheses, one plus, so 0.12 over 12, the conversion period in one year, arrow right, close parentheses, exponent, the negative symbol, open parentheses, 12, and then times 2 years. Close parentheses, move the cursor down, so 0.12 over 12. Yeah. Then again, we move the cursor, and then close parentheses. Then so once, once you're done with the equation, we press shift, calc, and then equal sign. Ayan po. Okay, so the monthly payment will be 3,059.78 pesos. Okay. Now for B, so to prepare an amortization schedule, we will now use the spreadsheet. Now in the spreadsheet, we will only input periodic payment up to outstanding principal. So for the payment number, meron naman po nakalagay doon na numbers, but we will input uh, the outstanding principal or the present value of 65,000 uh, in row one, okay? So dito po muna tayo. So we press menu. And then spreadsheet, so that's 8. And then move the cursor to D1. And then we input 65,000 pesos. Then equal sign. Yeah. Okay. Next is we input the periodic payment. So we computed in A the periodic payment, which is 3050 nine point something but when we input the periodic payment maganda siguro up to six decimal places para sakto yung computation natin sa tulang okay so let's continue so we move the cursor to cell a2 
So we input 3059.775695. Yeah, then equal sign. And then we will just copy and paste. So you press option, arrow down, and then copy and paste by pressing 2. Yeah. So we move the cursor down, equal sign. So down ulit, then equal sign. Paulit-ulit lang po. Hanggang uh, row 25. Since the first payment is on row uh, 2. Yeah. Arrow down, equal sign, up to cell or row 25. That's it. And then we will just press AC once done. Okay. Next is we identify or we input the interest paid per period. So in the formula or in A, we computed for I. So again, I mentioned that I is the periodic rate. And that is computed by dividing the interest rate, the annual interest rate, by the conversion period in one year. So that is 12% divided by 12, which is equal to 0 0.01. Okay. So we move the cursor to B, to cell B2. Yeah. And then we press option, fill formula. So the outstanding principal is in cell D1. So we press D1 times 0 0.01 equal sign. So the range will be from B2 to B25. So 5 equal sign. And then press again the equal sign. So that's it. Okay. Next. So if you could notice, wala pa po yung sa... B3 hang pababa po wala pa since ang outstanding principal pa lang po is yung nasa cell D1. Okay. So let's proceed. So let us now compute the principal repaid. So the principal repaid is uh, the difference between the uh, periodic payment and the interest paid per period. So we will just get the difference of A2 and B2 cells. Okay. So let's continue. So we move the cursor to C2, then press option, press 1 to fill formula, and then alpha A1, I mean 2, minus, and then alpha B2 equals, then move the arrow, move arrow right, C2 to C25, and then equal sign. So that's it. Okay. Lastly, so for the outstanding principal, that is the difference of A. So you nasa D1, and then we will subtract that to C2, the principal repaid. Okay. So again, we move the cursor to D2, and then press option, fill formula. Then alpha D1 minus alpha C2 equals. Then for the range, we have from D2 to D25. And then press equal sign. Yes, that's it. Okay, so we can move the cursor down to see all values. Yan po. Okay. So just take note ha, uh, to some calculator, hindi po yung mismong value yung makikita. So kapag ganun po, just press shift, menu, and then arrow down. Then you look for a spreadsheet. Yan. Katulad po yan. Formula po yung nakalagay dyan. So ulitin lang po natin. Shift, menu, arrow down, spreadsheet. So that's four. And then 2, show cell. And then press again 2 to show the value. Yan po. Okay?
Last one. So how much in total is the interest to be paid? So for this, uh, we can just move the cursor in cell B26, and then we'll get the sum from B2 to B25. Yeah. Okay, so we press option, arrow down. Yeah. And then press 4 for the sum. And then we input B, so that's alpha, B, 2, colon, so alpha, and then the integral sign, button, alpha, B, and then 25. And close by parentheses, and then equal sign. Okay, so the interest, total interest is 8,434.62, estimately. So you can also do that uh, in periodic payment. Okay, so we can also get the sum. So we can also identify, so that we can also identify the total payment. Okay, alpha, integral symbol, alpha A, and then 25 close parentheses, and then equal sign. Ayan po. So, when we get the difference of 73,000 and then the 8,400, that will be equal to the 65,000 pesos uh, present value. Okay? Next, let's have table. So, normally, when we say table, menu, function, um, we just want to construct table of values. Okay, but other than that, we can also apply this uh, function or menu if we want to identify point, point of intersection just like this problem. So let us identify the point of intersection between the line and the parabola given. Okay, so here's the steps. So we press menu. And then 9. And then we input the first function. So that's 2x plus 1 equals, input the second function, so x squared minus 2 equals, yan. Then let's say we use from negative 10 to 10. Yan. Equal sign. And then for the step, yan na lang po, 1. Then we press equal sign, okay? So we can just move, use the button or arrow down, button. Yan. Yan po. So meaning to say the intersection, the first intersection is negative 1, negative 1. And, uh, ayan. So another point of intersection, so the coordinates are 3, 7, okay? Also, given this, you can, pwede rin po siyang i-graph. So just press shift and then option. And then scan the QR code and use the Casio Edu Plus app. Okay. So when you do that, ito po yung makikita nyo na graph. Next one. So let's have equation. So for, ex for equation, let's say we have this given problem. Okay. So just take note that for equation, you can solve a uh, system system of equation up to four unknown or poly, polynomial equation or polynomial functions uh, up to degree four okay so given this problem so we want to identify about how long does a regular respiratory cycle last so for this so we press menu and then alpha a so that's negative symbol. And then we press 2 for polynomial. And then the degree here is 3. And then we input the coefficients. So we start with negative 0 0.035 equals. And then input 0 0.152 equals. And then lastly, we have 0 0.173. Yan. Yan. And then we just press the equal symbol. 5.28, negative 0 0.94, and then 0. But since for this problem, we uh, 
zero and negative values cannot be considered as answer, then we say that uh, the answer is 5.28 seconds. Okay. Next one, inequality. So for inequality, let's try to work on this given problem. Okay. At what age does a driver driver's reaction time tend uh, to be greater than 25 milliseconds? So V of X should be greater than 25. So substituting the values. So we will input take the inequality 0.005 X squared minus 0.23 X minus 3 greater than 0 using the inequality menu. So again, we press menu, then alpha B. So for the degree, that's 2. And then we press the appropriate option. So that is using option 1. Okay. Then we input the coefficients. So that's 0 0.005 equals negative 0 0.23. And then negative 3 equals. So we have negative 10.6. And then, so of course, we consider the positive answer, which is 56 or over or almost over 57. Okay. So it means that the drivers, uh, the drivers, drivers almost over 57 years old uh, tend to have uh, reaction time greater than 25 milliseconds. Okay. Last one. So we have ratio. So let's say we have this given problem. So meals pay by working 40 hours last week was 19,800 pesos. So how much will he receive for 32 hours of work? So for this, we will use the ratio function in your calculator. So that is by pressing menu and then alpha and then C. So, magkakatabi lang po yung A, B, C, and then D. Okay? So, let's begin. So, alpha, C, and then we use the appropriate button. So, for this, let's use 2. Okay? So, we input 40 equal sign, and then the 19,800 pesos equal sign, and then the 32 hours equal sign. Yan po. And then we just press the equal sign to identify the value. Okay. So meaning Miel will receive 15,840 pesos for working or for 32 hours of work. Okay. Finally, I would like to share with you uh, the application or some or possible activity that you can use using Casio Edu Plus app. So kung may internet connection naman po and possible naman po yung gamitin sa klase. So let's try this. Okay. So first you have on the part of the teacher, so you have to construct first class. So maybe this is applicable if you are applying groupings. Pag whole class po kasi masyadong marami yung mag makikita yung sagot dyan. So let's say yan. So we click on class and then click plus so the plus sign and then you indicate the class name so let's say group 1 11 abm1 so just like that reading iba rin naman so let's say ang name ay mat that shift okay and then once done with the class name you open this in a browser Okay, so why do we need to open this in a browser? So, copy po natin yung QR code. So, this QR code must be given to our students para alam po nila kung saan nila ilalagay or saan nila isesend yung activity na pinagawa nyo sa kanila. Okay, so, yan po yung makikita ninyo. So, you can just copy the QR code. Okay, and then dun po sa Casio Edu Plus, magkakaroon na po ng bagong, ano, ng bagong class. So, mat.shift. Okay, so you can try this one. So let's say on the part of the student. So let's say we ha this is the activity. So you can try this. Ha? 
Pero wag po puro number one yung piliin ninyo para iba-iba naman po yung graph na makita ko. So let's say we have this, show the graph of each function. So one function for each member of the group. So alphabetical order po, pwede po siguro yun. Then observe and make conjectures about the graph. So yan po. So on the part of the students, they will scan the QR code provided provided by the teacher. So yung kanina po. Yan. Okay, so bibilisan ko na lang po. Ah, medyo ano na po. So pag nascan na po ng bata, so press po yung add graph and calculation result. And then iscan po yung QR code sa calculators. And then pwede pong indicate ng bata kung ano po yung name nila or just the nickname. And then press share po. Okay, so kapag na-share na po, ito po yung lalabas, sharing successful. And then, yun, yung mga bata po, makikita po nila kung yung graphs po, yung mga nag-share na po ng graph doon. So, that's it po. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, this is gonna be well. Technically, it's, it's supposed to be a long talk, but uh, we'll try to keep it on time. So I would like to offer you uh, this talk uh, on harmonized melts in math and science for flexible teaching and learning. And um, of course, uh, as said a while ago, I am from the Philippine Normal University. So before I continue, I would like I would like to make a shout out. So again, shout out to DepEd Mandaluyong. I've been with Mandaluyong for some for some you know tasks, and they've been very accommodating. Yung mga bosses sa uh, SDO Mandaluyong, and then um, yung mga nasa uh, si Mam si Sir Resti, si Mam Roxan, tapos siya pa yung Mandaluyong Science and yung MP Nag, matas na paralan ng Nepali Gonzales. And of course, I would also like to thank uh, Kasha for inviting me or having me. Ayan, thank you po. Ayan. Teachers, uh, mga teachers, mga kaguroan natin sa Mandaluyong at yung mga nanonood na hindi taga Mandaluyong, uh, tulungan niyo po ako na ma-identify ko muna ang ating audience ngayon. So please uh, go to this site by uh, scanning the QR code or join, uh, going to slido.com in your browser and keying in the, the code which is hashtag 90424. So, uh, I would like you first to join me in Slido so I can see the spread of uh, the people who are joining us here. Okay? So, punta lang po ako ng Slido. All right. Let me go to Slido. Oops. Sorry. All right. Let's play. Game. So, sa mga teachers po natin na nandyan, Please answer or please give me the, uh, no, indulge me. Okay, sagutin lang po natin. Number one, which specific subject did you teach for the longest time? So, ano na po yung mga naturo nyo ng matagal, no? Uh, kung bagong teacher lang po, ano po yung tinuturo nyo recently? Okay, so tingnan po natin ang spread ng ating data. So, isa pa lang atay na nakakasagot. Antayin ko po yung inyong mga sagot. Marami po yan. Ayan, ang dami, no? You can answer two no, or three kung paulit-ulit or marami kayong tinuturo. I just want to see the spread of the data. No, So, sug natin to. So far, we have Earth Sciences, Gen Math. Uh, we have, ayun, may Precal and Basical. Yan, we'll see. Yan, 12 people have tried to key in their answers. We have 13 people. You might hindi po nakaka nakaka ano to nakapaso sa slide it's okay uh, i know sometimes it will be you know difficult to to handle gadgets no maglilipat ka from facebook to your qr code scanner so ayan no dahil yung talk ni ma'am red ay math so malamang nakaramihan na nandito ay mga math teachers pa rin ano ayan but we have a spread also from the the other sciences like physics earth sciences earth and life chemistry Biology, physical sciences, um, 
pre-calculus, pre-chemistry, and so on. So, so far, leading tayo sa general mathematics. So, shout out sa mga gen math teachers. Uh, I hope yung mga gen math teachers, no, uh, talagang G na G sila. So, talagang pwede din natin silang pagturuin ng science in the future. Uh, later, I'll talk about it. So, ayan. So, nangunguna talaga yung science ay mga math natin. Uh, but we see the spread, no? We see the spread in the sciences. Thank you very much for indulging me in this first question. Um, you can still key in your answer. Kaya lang, I'll move on to the next poll question. Para dire-diretso po tayo, okay? So I'll move on to question number two. Oops, sorry. Uh, my question number two is, guys, mga teachers, what is your favorite science topic or concept? Bigyan nyo naman ako ng sagot na ano ba talaga yung pinakapaborito nyong science topic or concept ninyo? Ayun, genetics. Ayan, paborito ko rin po yan. Antayin ko, I'll give you a minute to win it. <laughs> okay, wow, may, mga may mga physics teachers tayo in the house. They like mechanics. And of course, yung mga bio people natin. Gas laws, yes, of course. DNA, yep. Antayin natin. Ayan, so far, no, madami, madami, most of you said mechanics. Balance equations na no, in stoichiometry, genetics, pahabol yung genetics, ha? Earth science, specific po, baka pwede kayo mag-cite ng specific na topic. Chemical reactions, okay, stoichiom pa rin, Mag electronics, magnetism, okay, acceleration, that's with mechanics. Ayan, ang dami, no? Thank you. Uh, sige, keep on, uh, keep on entering your answers po. Ayun, dumadami sila. Ayan, so leading na yung genetics natin, no? Ayan. Ayan, siguro i... Ayan. For now, uh, yeah, paulit-ulit yung stoic, yung chemical chemical uh, reactions, balancing equations. Ayan dyan yung ating gasos. At saka yung earth science, nakita natin, paikot siya, no? Andun din yung mga chemistry topics like electronic configurations, Yung physics, no? Although, ay, may nakita ako mga medyo biological yung terms like scientific names in taxonomy, of course. Uh, wow, there's quantum physics, space astro uh, space science and astronomy. Yep. I think most people naman like astronomy, no? Especially the kids. Ayan, so for 43 people, most of you said you actually like genetics. Thank you very much. Um, and last question, please indulge me again. Uh, don't worry, you can still answer, no? Later on. Hindi naman to matatapos. Um, one more is, what is your favorite mathematics topic or concept? So, uh, regardless po kung kayo ay science or math teachers, ano po yung paborito niyong math topic or concept? Uh, math topic po. Yan, math topic. Okay, you can be very specific if you want. No, specific. Like radicals, you know, imaginary numbers. Uh, math topic, please. Sige, it's Okay. <laughs> Okay, pwede naman natin makonsider yung sa paggawa ng panisphere na math. Ay, may nakita na akong statistics, geometry, oh, ah, combinat, ah, yeah. Integers. Linear coordinate plane, yeah, linear equations, yeah, yeah. Sige po, so na leading tayo sa algebra, we have trigonometry, um, linear equations. Wala bang may gusto ng quadratic equations? Okay, exponential and logarithmic uh, functions. Na paborito din natin yun. Especially yung mga na... Ayun, I like this one. No? Non-routine problems, napaka 21st century educational landscape. Ayan. So for ar around 43 people, no? More or less 42 people answered. And leading tayo sa algebra and trigonometry. Napaka kamahalaga naman po talaga. Uh, maraming salamat for indulging me. I will not close the, the poll. You can keep your answers uh, coming, no? Pamaya, titignan ko ulit pagkatapos at pwede ako mag-shoutout na lang kahit doon na lang sa chat box or something. Okay? So with that, uh, let me go back to my presentation. Uh, thank you again no, for indulging me. Ayan. So let me go back. Thank you. So magbibigay lang po ako ng disclaimer kasi yung title ko po napakalaki. Alam niyo naman, nakita niyo yung salitang milks. And my disclaimer is simple. I, I will not deal with all the milks in science and math. Because you would not have enough time. If we will do it, uh, willing naman sana kong gawin siya. Pero I know it will not, you know, uh, be su sufficient no, when it comes to the time. So, yun ang disclaimer ko, ha? Pero magbibigay po ako. I'm gonna give some examples where we can converge 
uh, points for integration and harmonize um, ideas no, in science and math. So we'll provide um, a two-way a two-way uh, mirror, no, a two-way vision for both science and math. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, um, when I give a talk, I always ask, what is the goal of teaching kids? So why do you think we need to te uh, teach uh, math and science to Filipino children? Um, I guess knowing the purpose of teaching would actually underscore the need for doing it. Diba? Bakit kailangan natin siyang gawin? No? Ano yung purpose nun, no? So, oftentimes, there are no explicit answers to these questions. No? When I say explicit is yung answer na makukuha natin sa mga papel, no? sa mga black and white. We can't really find as explicit answers. However, I would like to hi highlight the outcome as prescribed by the Department of Education. And according to the Department of Education, it's basically to have holistically developed Filipinos or Filipino children with 21st century skills. And we as uh, in the math and the sciences, we are, we are components no, to reach this goal. So in other words, sabi nga kanina ni Ma'am Ma Red, no, it is important that in math you develop problem solving and critical thinking among learners, similar with science. No? Uh, that's my point because my point is we have to look at science and math together. We have to look at math and science as one. Uh, later on, I'll, I'll go to that. So, tulong-tulungan po natin i-develop ang mga learners na ito, despite the times, no? despite the difficult times. Okay. Uh, I found this in Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. I found this in Twitter, and it's funny, but at, at, at the same time, it underscores the need for education. So, especially math and science education. So, for example, if, if you will see this, nakakatawa siya, pero at the same time, you will think, who, who will write this, uh, who will write this post, no? Um, especially now, we have we don't really have to shy away from from our task, no, our responsibility as educators. Kahit pandemic, kahit new normal ang usapan, kasi kailangan kailangan. Um, the pandemic has placed STEM, STEM, science, math, education in the forefront. Uh, ngayon natin na intindihan na kailangan natin ng STEM professionals. So may task talaga po tayo. All right. Okay, I found this meme and I found it funny. So sabi na, me getting into science. So minsan gusto natin maging science teacher, maging scientist. Kaya lang, <laughs> may math. Parang some people will say, ang hirap naman kasi ng math, so I don't want to take science kasi may math siya. So parang ganun yung idea, no? I, they don't want to go to science kasi there's math in, in science. So parang, uh, parang at some point, some people, I'm not saying all, some people would like to see math like, uh, parang a factor that allows people to shy away from the discipline. Diba? And and I, I found it the meme that sabi niya, I haven't touched math in years and I'm a science major. <laughs> now I struggle with simple addition and depression. All right. Um, yeah, you can find this meme in the in the link that I provided along the side. So yeah, uh, we often, oftentimes, no, kahit ang mga sudyante, parang nagtataka sila bakit may problem solving na dun sa science na mga word problems and they, they're thinking na, di ba science to? Bakit may math? Parang ganun. They're asking those questions repeatedly and oftentimes we tell them or we give them answers. But oftentimes, again, <laughs> they don't really understand our reasons, no? Okay. Because sometimes uh, we give them the math and the science that they cannot understand. Okay. I, I guess we have to realize that. Now, um, we have to be able to be facilitators, co-assessors, uh, sharers of the math and science that they know and that they can use. So we have to remember that education has this sense of utility. Uh, kailangan natin siyang magamit. So paano mo siya magagamit kung di mo siya naiintindihan? All right. Okay. Uh, kanina sabi ko, I, most people like astronomy, especially kids. Lahat tayo duman sa pagkabata and we loved astronomy. And, you know, astronomy, rocket science is basically math science. Um, you don't become uh, a rocket scientist. You don't become a rocket engineer or an aeronautics engineer without math and science. So that's that's a good point to start with. Okay. Now I, I would like to hi highlight how we try to maximize the milks. Okay. But I will not discuss a lot on milks as, uh, on the nature and stuff like that because that will actually cover much of my time. But I would like to pose a question: Why do we have to talk about milks? Okay. So of course. Um, the, the other parts, I took it from the document of the Department of Education. So they say that the work, uh, the MELTS work in close association with other competencies uh, in other subjects. So I'd like to underscore the word integration. So um, they highlight 
uh, kumbaga sa Filipino, no? pakikipagkapwa subject. No? Nakikipagkapwa subject. So th there is a sense of bridge that exists or a sense of uh, pathway for integration for certain subjects. Number two is the recurrence. And if you will realize, if you will scan all throughout the milks ng math and science, may mga nawawala, may nawala, lalo na sa mga lower grades, kasi ina-avoid natin your currents. But of course, because you want to do spiraling or the correct scaffold of these concepts and these skills, the teacher cannot avoid no, not to teach. Okay? And finally, the ability to be clustered together. And I call this umbrella competencies and subcompetencies. So within the subject, uh, there are competencies that we can cluster. Kaya nga minsan magugulat kayo na ilan lang yung competencies na makikita nyo sa isang quarter, no? ilang weeks sila, kasi kinluster na sila. Although, hindi natin sinasabi na madali yun, no? Because you need to unpack it. Now, given the nature, we have to reteach, no? We have to reteach, reteach, reteach. Okay? As long as, uh, to the point that we get the, the outcomes that we want. And another point is, we have to be able to unpack the milks. Now, my point here in this discussion is to be able to, well, hopefully unpack the milks to make it more productive, especially for us science and math teachers. Okay? So, um, my key takeaway, my point here is, we have, alam ko mahirap kasi nagsisimula na tayo, uh, nagagawa na, gumagawa na tayo ng mga ADM modules, gumagawa na tayo ng SLMs. Pero I would like, siguro after some time, pag medyo nakahinga na tayo, let's try to align. Let's try to map and align between everything. The learning experiences, the assessment strategies, and of course, ibabangga natin yun sa MELTS. Okay? Oops. Okay. So, now, three points. Let's adapt, adapt, and apply. Okay? So, we adapt the milks. Okay? The milks are provided, we adapt it, we embrace it. But you do not adapt it if you don't understand it. Okay? You don't understand why, why it was given like that. You don't understand how to use that. No? Pag ganun. Pag hindi mo inaintindihan, you can't adapt it fully. Second point. Adapt, no? Because we have to realize that there is no one-size-fits-all in education. And this pandemic has placed the word flexibility amidst all of us, no? Napaka-importante napaka, uh, ng salitang flexibility, no? We have to fit. We have to adapt. Uh, kasi wala, walang nag-survive na organism or species pag hindi siya nag-adapt. Okay, so yun lang ang usapan dito. Okay? So you get something, you embrace, and you adapt sa it to something else. Okay? And you apply it. Okay? The, here's the point. No? To, in flexible teaching and learning, we apply what we understand and what we've aligned. And this is now the creating the plans, your SLMs, your modules, your activity materials and assessments, even those that you put on your LR portal no? and your DepEd Commons and other learning, uh, learning management systems. So three things, no? adapt, adapt, and apply. Allow me to continue. Now, I think that Knowing all of this, we have to understand that there are three layers of learning. And I would like to thank Dr. Christian Pastor for sharing with this picture from his presentation before. So that we look into the physical environment, the virtual space, and the cultural exposure. Now our students are not in the physical environment uh, pertaining to the school, but they are exposed culturally. They are exposed in their households, in the, in the locality that they live in. And they can use the, the, the vast expanse of the virtual space. So I, I guess we are already provided with such, no, with such. And we just have to tie everything up, harmonize, integrate, and converge, especially for science and math, because it's easier done within our disciplines. All right. So if we can harmonize learning content and outputs across disciplines, like ICT English, math, Filipino science, MAPE, social science, then it would be easy on our end if we can harmonize STEM because STEM is much related to each other, okay? So why do we need to harmonize pala, no? Bakit ko to naiisip? Kasi po, remember, yung bata po, when, when you send your modules to the kid or to the child, he will receive how many modules? Like eight modules in a week. And this will be how long? Like 20 pages per module? And how many tasks does it cover? And it's times eight. And, and what if each week there is a deliverable or there are deliverables? So mahirap yun sa bata. So uh, the best answer is to, to talk, no? to harmonize the content, to harmonize the output, such that if science and math can blend together, the output can be one for science and math, 
And some topics in science will be in science and some topics will be in math. So, mas madali yun sa bata. And we have to remember also that we have to appreciate and, you know, uh, put, uh, we have to appreciate the parents as well because they, they will be the second teachers. They will be co-assessors of learning of the child. No? Tutulungan nila yung bata. Kaya pag sobrang mahirap sa, sa bata at sa parent, ma malamang ito be an impediment to the learning of the child. Especially in higher science and math. Remember, it's so hard to teach calculus to the child. Tapos yung magulang niya mag-facilitate sa kanya. It's actually very hard. Now, uh, when you look at uh, harmonization of content, I have these points, but I will zoom in to the first point, which is clustering based on nature. Like, for example, all the social sciences, all the humanities, of course, the STEM and allied fields. No, We can also do it based on medium, but I'm not going to discuss on that. Clustering based on outputs, pwede naman sa math and science. And ito important para sa math and science. We harmonize based on knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values. More often than not, the skill is learned in science as well as math. No, nag, nag, nag shift lang. Pero the content and the application is in science. So pwede natin yung gawa ng paraan that we can merge that. Or we can look for points of interaction, points of convergence and integration. Okay, so... Uh, when when it comes to harmonization or integration, we we have this, no. But I'm not gonna discuss into detail what these are, because most of us already understand uh, integration. Um, my point here is, 21st century education landscape is not compartmentalized subjects. It's not about compartmentalized subjects. 21st century education landscape and the fourth industrial revolution, characterized by the merging of cyber physical systems. For example, emergence of artificial intelligence, nanotechnology. These are multidisciplinary sciences. For example, artificial intelligence. It's not science. It's not just math. It's everything in between. It has society. It has ethics. So everything else that's that's coming out of these uh, changes in the society, in in the society in the world, they are actually geared towards integration. All right. Uh, and we have to remember a while ago I talked about alignment. And we, when we do alignment, we do alignment between these three: curriculum, instruction, as assessment. Um, the yung ginawa ni Mam kanina, she was, you know, sharing uh, tips on how to do activities as well as which can serve as assessment. But at the end of the day, uh, even if you have so many activities, so many assessments, you will have to ask: uh, Does it actually go back? No, does it reflect my expectations as prescribed by the competencies, the content standards, and the performance standards? Because at the end of the day, the key stage standard is reflected from those. So kung hindi natin ma-achieve yung sinet nating outcomes, kahit ang dami-dami mong activities na hindi tatamaan yun, wala siyang sense. Okay? So maganda rin na madami, pero dapat tumatama. Or kung nari, nag-darts ka, lahat ng dart mo tumatama sa bullseye. No? Yun ang point natin doon. Okay. So anong sinasabi ko? Uh, ang point ko is we have to look at science and math and STEM as a whole as one. Uh, merong mga philosophical perspectives na nagsasabi na kinokompartmentalize natin siya. Na science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Or sometimes they put arts and agriculture in between. But um, th there are a lot of research that focus on STEM as STEM. You don't say STEM is science. No, but STEM is STEM. STEM is STEM as it is. Okay, so let me continue. Now, uh, scientists today, uh, we use a variety of mathematical tools. We cannot deny this, especially those working in the laboratories, those who are doing research. We, we need no, we need calculus, we need discrete mathematics, and we do statistics no, to describe physical, biological, and even the social systems that we are a part of. Now, in the math classes, one of the biggest needs or questions by our students is usually relevance. Tatanangin niya, bakit ko po ito gagawin, teacher? Why do I need to get the limit of this function, for example? Why do I need to integrate this? Diba? Parang kahit nga sa amin sa physics, no? bakit ko po kailangan malaman yung strength of the electric field at a certain point from the source? And, and oftentimes, we struggle to give the answer. Uh, diba? Parang we struggle, no? We struggle to give the answer. And we often say, uh, let's wait, no? Darating tayo dun sa point na mas matatahi natin siya. But oftentimes, our students want instant answers. So students want to know how they are going to benefit from these calculations. Diba? 
Kaya nga, minsan, they shy away from the math in the science kasi hindi din nila nakikita yung kahalagahan nun. I'm not saying all, no, but there are a lot. There are some, no? So, for one, we have to look at na since the biggest uh, the biggest uh, uses of mathematics in science is data gathering and analysis, we can start there, no? When we plan investigations, so we can ask them to do measurements and so on and so forth. Now, it would be nice as well that when you ask your students to solve, you can use science problems and, diba, that require math tools. So, pag binawa natin yun, we are now pressing on the student na gamitin mo yung math sa science. May mga instances na ganito yung nangyayari, parang nag-aaral sila ng science and nag-aaral sila ng math and when they need the same skills or same topics, hindi nila ma-distinguish na yun pala yun ay isa lang. Kasi parang iba yun sa science, iba yun sa math. That's not true. Nothing changes in, in math. No? Kung ano tinuro mo ng linear equation sa math, pag ginamit siya sa science, ganun pa rin siya. Hindi nagbabago ang rules. No? So, dapat makita natin yun. At makita ng bata yun pala. Okay. ba? <laughs> Matagal na, no, when we started to embrace science as science, no? like in the intelligence of Isaac Newton, he didn't forward to us nature as nature alone. No, He forwarded to us nature as being mathematical. And we owe a lot. No, We owe a lot um, of mathematics also from Newton, especially calculus. No? And we love, we love Newton for that, no? especially mga physics majors, although sometimes mahirap. Pero we love Newton for that. Uh, I'll give some examples of convergence points and interaction points. Number one, measurement and dimensional analysis. We do we do measurement in science. We do measurement in math. Diba? Nagkanina nagpakita si ma'am ng conversion. So, important din yung dimensional analysis. So, I'll go through. No, Actually, marami ako examples. So, medyo bibilisan ko na lang po. Okay. Um, when it comes to measurement and dimensional analysis, ano yung mga nakikita kong competencies? So, sa MELTS na to ha. So, for example, GP1, General Physics 1, no? Solve measurement problems. Pero grade 7 mathematics pa, meron, ng, meron na siyang mga competencies that would align to that. Actually, vertical siya. No? Like approximate measurement, convert measurement, solve problems using conversion. So, um, you see, there is already alignment even between math and the sciences. Dito pa lang. Okay? Let me continue. Oh, for, for, for example, variation, no? Uh, paborito din natin to, no? Variation. Um, ano yung mga gamit no saan natin to nakikita? So tingnan lang po natin ha. Okay, um nandito yung mga physics major so uh, alam naman natin yung Hooke's law, di ba? Uh, wherein we can actually look at Hooke's law as a form of a variation. Di ba? Where we relate um, the elongation to the to the weight attached to the string or the spring and of course the restoring force as well, no? So this is interesting. Actually, we can provide the data in, in tabular form, and you can use your class with calculator to graph the, to graph the, uh, what's this? To graph uh, the data and then try to solve for the equation or find for the constant of uh, the variation. So, paborito natin ang Hooke's law, properties of solids, no? specifically elasticity. Uh, these are some questions I gave to my uh, class. I ha By the way, I actually had the class called Mathematical Methods for the Sciences. Marami kami tuturo nito. Um, and then we try to impose, not impose talaga, we try to, to press on our students the need for these mathematical tools to be able to quantify you know, science concepts. So for example, this one is on variation pa rin. The acceleration due to gravity on the moon is one-sixth of that, that of the Earth. What is the weight of an 85 kilogram astronaut on the moon? So, anong sense nito, no? Ang sense nito is, sa ma if ever you give this as a problem, you try to give them the idea of the concept of mass and weight, which are two different concepts. Magkaiba siya. So, alam mo yun, yung pag binigay mo lang siya sa math, yung bata will have that, that interest already. Now, when they go to that science class, ay, oo nga, no, iba pala yung mass and weight. Yung nagbabago pala yung weight, yung mass pala pare parehas lang. Kasi it's matter within me, parang ganon. And then another is on frequency and length of a vibrating uh, string. Diba? Sabi dito, the frequency of a vibrating guitar string varies inversely as its length. So they can actually have applications on this in music, etc. But this, in essence, is variation. Let me continue. Okay, for example, the intensity of light, no? And then here is combined gas law, the, the lower example. What do we see here? 
So on the upper part, we have the inverse square law, which will have uses also in electricity, no? for example, Coulomb's law and gravitation for Newton's law of gravitation. And yung gas laws, no? like for example, the combined gas law there, uh, the example, no? shows the relationships between the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. Diba? Essentially, we are looking at variation, but we look or replace the words or the concepts within that. Let me continue. Um, in grade 9 mathematics, it is said that we have to let our students illustrate situations that involve the following variations. Direct, inverse, joint, and combined. So grade 9 pa lang, meron ka nang pwedeng pasukan ng science. Okay, let me continue by highlighting functions and graphical analysis. May mga graphical functions ang calculators ng kasyo. Uh, by the way, I, I, I have no, I have classes here, so thank you sa kasyo sa pag-provide. Very generous po ang kasyo. Ayan, so... Although there are apps no, that, that graph, no, it's actually nice also to have a calculator. So, ano yung mga points for integration natin sa functions and graphical analysis? So, for example, mechanics. No? Sa kinematics, we can look into uh, problems on motion. Uh, I took this from uh, Fundamentals of Physics by Resnick and Holiday. So, see, for example, uh, you're driving, and then afterwards, after a certain period of time, you started walking. And here you see your position from the station, which is essentially displacement. So uh, you can actually apply a lot of concepts in mathematics here, including, of course, geometry, including angles, of course. But here the focus I would like to highlight is graphing and under being able to understand graphs. Next. Uh, okay, uh, I gave this as a, as a quiz in, in my class. Um, Okay, I gave this uh, to, to my class and I, I told them to convert the velocity versus time graph to acceleration and displacement uh, versus time graph after 9 seconds. So, I, I noticed they had difficulty. Nahirapan sila mag-convert ng graphs kasi basically siguro they lack you know, the understanding of how to do it. Okay? So, pero madali lang talaga siya in, in reality. Actually, sa mga not results, if I may say so, sa mga not results natin for the past years, mahina ang bata sa graphing. Okay. Um, alam natin yan. Pero bakit hindi natin magawa ng paraan? I, I don't know why, no? Pero we try to address it. Pero mahina pa rin sila sa graphing or analysis of graphs. Also, for the chem people here, uh, we have Boyle's Law, no? Uh, I like the graph I took from this side. Um, we know what happens in Boyle's Law, no? This one, you have a PV diagram. This is the pressure in pound per square inch uh, uh, as with the volume in ML. You see, you see this one, this curve. In essence, this is an isotherm because this exists in constant temperature. So if you graph this, uh, one over P uh, across uh, the, against the volume, you'll get a straight line telling you the, the constant, which is temperature. But this is already an isotherm, diba? So, ang ganda-ganda tingnan ito, no? Another one is we can apply it to epidemiological studies, no? For, uh, I took this in ncov.ph. If you want to go, if you want to know the statistics of, about ncov in the Philippines, please go to ncov.ph. Sobrang galing ng kanilang mga, um, ng kanilang mga data, ng how they present the data. So, for example, you have to present here uh, yung mga namatay, na confirmed cases, namatay, and mga nakarecover. So, tingnan nyo, and pataas pa rin ng pataas yung confirmed cases. So we really have to do something about it. So pati sa biological sciences, we do this. No? We do these graphs. We make these graphs. Uh, again, this is from ncov.ph. Case by group. No? Nakikita nyo? Yung pinakamarami is nasa 21 to 30. Yung age group na yun. Okay? And then yung pinakamaraming namamatay asa. Nasa siguro nandito sa 61 to 70. No? Also, uh, I took this also from ncov.ph. Cases in NCR, no? Ibang ibang way naman to show yung graphical representation of data, no? Ibang way to show the data. But you can see here pa rin the spread. Actually, pag pumunta kay sa ncov.ph, pag nilagay niyo yung cursor niyo dyan, lalabas kung ilan yung cases. Right? So, pinopromote ko yun kasi uh, that's for information of everyone and we really need to spread the correct information uh, this time. Of course, we can also look at biodiversity and the changes that happen in biodiversity. So I took this from a research uh, by this team of 
uh, Daskalova, and it's on landscape forest loss as a catalyst of population and biodiversity change. And these are graphs that actually show the data of the team. So we don't exclude biology from graphing. Okay. Also is again for graphing. This is again for bio uh, for biological sciences. So this um, I took this from a tweet. No, sabi dito cumulative percent uh, percent of vertebrate species driven to extinction by human activity. So ito palang nalaman nito na napaka 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 strong na nito para sa bata. Pero hindi nila ito maiintindihan kung hindi sila marunong mag-graph at tumingin or mag-analyze ng graphs. Alright. Now, what are the competencies that I actually took? Um, solves linear equations or inequality uh, by graphing, illustrates, and finds a slope. Ito, sa grade 7 yon. And then here we have, sa grade uh, 8 math, meron din tayong graphing. Okay. So, naka, nakasunod naman, developmental naman siya. And then, meron din sa business math, no? Kasi yung mga graphs din nila in business. And we also have in pre-calculus. So, we can really, you know, look for points of integration within and across. Okay. Um, for sa sciences, uh, for example, in grade 10 science, explain relationship between growth, population growth, and carrying capacity. That could be in a graph form. Explain how populations of organisms change, no? Uh, this is for uh, earth and life science. We have bio biology too. We have atom patterns of descent. Pwede rin to view in a graph. And then use gas laws. There may pressure, volume, or temperature. So sa general chemistry one. Yun. Ayan. Oh, and of course, no, general physics. Nandito tayo sa mga uh, graphs of motion, position, di ba? Um, velocity, acceleration. So, yun. Kaya sobra pong importante na marunong sila mag-graph at mag-analyze ng graph. And I think, lalo na ngayon, pag nag upload po tayo ng mga information online, lalo na yung may, may kinalaman sa pandemic, usually nakagraph po yun or nakagraphic organizer. And usually misinterpreted siya ng mga tao. Maybe because we did not prepare them well no, how to look at or analyze graphs. All right. Let me continue by highlighting the next example, which is on ratios and proportions. Saan natin ito titignan, no? Okay? Siyempre, paborito natin, stoichiometric calculations, di ba? So, pwede tayong magbigay ng examples na magpapakita ng stoichiometry para naman yung bata na relink na sa kanya na, ay, oo nga, no, yung ratio and proportion pala na inaral ko sa math noon ay na-apply ko sa chemistry. Uh, in essence, they would not understand ratio and proportion, no? Kapag hindi nila nakikita ito sa ibang mga bagay, including chemistry. So, sabi ito sa general chemistry 2, no? Perform sto stoichiometric calculations. Sa gen chem 1, no? Apply principles of stoichiometry. Ito din, paborito din natin kanina, genetics, no? Sa Mendelian genetics, for example, di ba? When we have the phenotypic and the genotypic ratios, di ba? Nakakatawa kaya pag nag uh, nagpagawa tayo ng 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 cross or ng ng Punnett square sa bata no kasi often times iniisip nila hindi nila masyadong naiintindihan yung uh, yung cross and even yung ratios so yun so dito yung phenotypic ratio niya 3 is to 1 tatlong purple no isang puti and the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 meaning isang homozygous dalawang heterozygous at isang homozygous na white yung Pero the rest, colored violet siya. Ayan. See? Uh, marami tayong points of integration. Ano pa ba? Oops, sorry. So in grade 8, uh, meron tayong Mendelian genetics. In grade 9, we have non-Mendelian genetics or non-Mendelian inheritance. Yung mga papasok na dyan yung ating mga uh, multiple allelism, papasok na yung incomplete dominance, no? para maaral na nung bata na hindi lahat Mendelian or uh, complete dominance, ika nga. Of course, equation of continuity, no? Di ba pa nagdidilig tayo, yung mahilig magdilig gamit yung hose? Pag tinatakpan natin yung, yung labasa ng water sa hose, di ba usually sumisilit yung water, bumibilis yung water? Now, the equation of, of continuity relates uh, an important ratio and proportion, which is actually the, the cross-sectional area, okay? And the velocity of the fluid within that particular tube or container. So, we see that kapag mas maliit yung cross-sectional area, mas mabilis yung yung fluid, no? Yung fluid. So, this has applications, of course, in Bernoulli's principle. 
in, in general physics one. Okay, uh, a good example for that, no, fluid dynamics is on, of course, biology. Now, for example, if we represent, sorry, if we represent, if Q represents the rate of fluid flow through a tube and is dependent to the radius R given by the equation Q equals constant uh, R raised to the fourth, by how much uh, will blood flow through an artery be reduced for a sudden three quarters reduction of blood vessel radius? Diba? Bakit to magandang tanong? Kasi remember, pag nagkakaroon ng mga plaques or nagkakaroon ng block yung mga arteries natin, numinipis yung daanan ng dugo, okay? Which usually result to trans-ischemic attack, no? Or if ever, nagkakastroke, no? Parang ganun, no? To, to the brain, no? If ever. Mga ganun. So, may implications at may applications. So, sabi ng general physics one, no? Apply Bernoulli's equation, principle of continuity, no? So, very important. Actually, tahi-tahi po yung Equation of continuity and Bernoulli's principle. Ano pa? Grade 6 math, no? Solve proportions. Grade 9 math, apply fundamental theorems of proportionality. And, uh, of course, business math, no? So, tahi-tahi din siya. Of course, let's continue. Uh, linear equations, no? Paborito din natin to. Saan natin siya nakikita? Um, let me give an example. I, I took this from this site. So it's a mixture problem using linear equations. Actually, we can look at it two ways. No, pag ma teacher ka tingin mo talaga jan mixture problem. Pero pag ikaw ay nasa chemistry, di ba? Ang tingin natin jan ay concentration problem. No, uh, concentration meaning concentrations of solutions. So in a chemistry lab, a student has two solutions that contain hydrogen chloride and is mixing them. So uh, yung hydrogen chloride magigisang uh, to, magiging siyang, pag naging solution siya, magiging siyang hydrochloric acid, no? One solution is 15% HCl and the other is 5% HCl. How many ml or what's the volume of each solution that should be mixed to obtain 100 ml of an 8% HCl solution? So, naging solution na siya, no? So, hydrochloric acid na siya. So, pwede tina yung solution and if you do the math, sabi nga, we try to get the answer as... 30, per, uh, 30 ml of the 15% HCl and 70 ml of the 5% HCl. So, dito, dito na-apply na natin siya. Of course, yung bata marunong dapat mag-create nung equations uh, based on the understanding of the problem. Doon pumapasok yung kahirap, nahihirapan yung iba kasi hindi nila ma-express into equations yung problem. So, yun, doon tayo dapat pumasok. Of course, yung kinematics equations natin, actually, hindi lang siya linear, but uh, we also have, uh, pwede rin gawin yung quadratic, no? So, may mga kinematics equations tayo. Dalawa yan, yung nasa taas, yung ating mga nasa linear motion, no? Technically, uh, na, like, horizontal or vertical. So, ginagamit natin yan sa free fall din. Uh, if we change, the, palitan natin yung notation na unti. Pero, technically, we can use this for constant acceleration, no? Uh, yung nasa baba is for constant angular acceleration, so, ito yung mga uniformly accelerated motions. So, these are the equations which we, which we can work with. And ang isa lang tatandaan natin is, number one, I mean, isa lang tatandaan natin is constant yung acceleration. Yung sa taas, no, linear, and yung sa baba, yung angular acceleration niya. If you will notice, if you will scrutinize the form, they are the same. Iba lang yung notation kasi angular yung form nung sa baba, uh, linear yung form nung nasa taas. Diba? Uh, actually, nakikita ko po ito sa mga learner's material po ng mga bata natin. As early as grade 9, nagsusolve na po sila nito. Actually, uh, lower than grade 9. No? Grade 8, meron silang motion. Pag grade 9, may projectile na sila, nagde-derive na sila ng projectile equations. Pero walang sense sa bata yung pag-derive. Kasi hindi niya naiintindihan yun. Okay? Um, I will share. Uh, I took this from Del Flexible Ideas naman tayo, Flexible Learning. Meron po akong Facebook group na ginagamit ko rin sa klase, close group siya. Uh, private group siya. Nag-upload ako doon ng mga solutions sa mga exams na ginagawa or tinitake ng mga sudyante ko para makita nila kung paano ko na-solve. Especially yung hindi nila na-solve. Okay? So, for example, no October 10, binigyan ko sila nitong problem that I took from, actually from Holt, from Holt Physics. And I solved it here and I posted my answer uh, in their Facebook group. And yun, kasi hindi daw nila na-solve yung EPs. It's actually about the cockroach, no? Yung dalawang cockroach separated by a distance 60 centimeters. Ayan. So, sinagotan ko lang siya sa papel tapos pinicturean ko. Ayan. Pwede naman natin gawin yan, ano? Okay. Of course, 
Sino ba naman ang makakalimot na magandang example ng linear equations or systems of linear equations ng ano no, Kirchhoff's rules, no? This is Gustav Kirchhoff. So, ito yung kinakatakutan ng ibang majors. Pero in essence, ang mga major they understand the Kirchhoff's laws, yung current and voltage rules or law, no? Naiintindihan nila 'yon, no? That pag meron kang junction, lahat ng pumasok, yun din yung lalabas. At pag meron kang loop Whatever the voltage rise is equal to the voltage drop. Naiintindihan ng bata yun or ng mga learners. Pero pag binigyan mo na sila ng ganyan and they have to work, they have to work with the equations to solve for unknowns. Oftentimes, they don't get the answer. Diba? For example, given yung values ng uh, resistances of resistor 1, 2, and 3 and uh, the voltages um, of the EMF sources E1 and E2, pwede natin gawin yung ating equations or i-write yung ating equations, basta tatandaan lang natin, di ba, dapat yung sum ng lahat ng currents is zero, meaning lahat ng pumasok equal sa lahat ng lumabas. Ganun din sa voltage or sa loop rule, yung voltage rise equal sa voltage drop. Actually, ang isang difficulty dito is the sign. Di ba, laging issue yung sa sign pag sa math, uh, pag nung bata pa tayo, hindi natin makuha kasi it's either the negative or the positive. May raming bata nagkaka-issue doon. Pero here, Clear naman, more or less clear sa kanila, given naman yung convention. Nahirapan sila pag pinagpatong-patong na nila yung mga equations, actually. Alright. So, here are the competencies. These are MELC competencies. That's why hindi ko na kinuha lahat, no? Uh, mga MELC competencies, mga MELCs lang. Like, solve linear equations, grade 7, math. Solve problems involving systems of linear equations, grade 8, no? Uh, determine solutions of systems. That's with uh, SHS STEM um, pre-calculus, no? And meron tayong general physics, no? Kasi pasok dyan yung mga uh, linear equations for free fall. Apply principles of stoichiometry for Gen Chem 1. And for Gen Phi 2, yung Kirchhoff's loss. So pwede natin siyang tahitahiin. Okay, let me continue. Another concept that I would like to show na pwede natin pagsimulang pag-usapan sa mga science and math is rational algebraic expressions. One good example is when we talk about resistors and capacitor connections or circuits. No, um, the one at the, that I'm showing right now is uh, uh, what's this? Uh, a set of resistors connected. No, uh, na vary. No, may nakasiris, may nakaparallel. So if you want to calculate um, the equivalent resistance, di ba? Usually kina calculate natin yah. We really draw this to to a simple circuit na mare represent ng isang R equivalent. Pero pag nasa parallel, we have to realize na pwede natin siyang ibigay as um, yung R equivalent could be given as 1 over R equivalent is equal to the, uh, the sum of the inverses of all the resistances of all uh, the resistors connected in parallel. ba Yun. Sa, sa, sa capacitors naman, baliktad. So kapag series naman sila naka-inverses. Alright. So for grade uh, for SHS Gen Math distinguishes rational functions, rational equations, and rational inequalities. And for grade eight and nine mathematics, solve problems involving rational algebraic equations. So pwede pwede na itong ipaso, kasi meron na pong circuits ang grade eight. Ang grade eight po uh, alam nating lahat na ang grade eight ang grade level na kompleto ang science uh, ng physics, no? Anim ang lessons or modules ng physics sa grade eight. So, kompleto yun from force to electricity, sound, light, ter, uh, yeah, kompleto siya. Heat, kompleto po siya. Kaya, ang daming points of convergence doon. Okay, quadratic equations, although nabangit ko ito kanina, we can look at it in population densities, uh, kinetics, no, equilibrium and chemistry, and of course, kinematics and physics. So, biochem physics. For example, no, you want to calculate the population density. Diba? Um, for example, in ecosystems, when you study ecosystems, we really have to do this, no? Ayan. So, bibisan ko na kasi 10 minutes na lang. Ayan. All right. So, of course, linear and quadratic functions. Okay? So, ayan yung mga example, no? Ideal and real gases, solutions, chemical equilibrium, enzyme kinetics. Ayan. Example din po, no? Binibigay ko usually sa test ito. No? For example, calculate the work done directly proportional to the the natural logarithm of V2 over V1 and the R or the universal gas constant. Nakikita natin ng LN 
or natural logarithm dyan, usually pag meron tayong isothermal processes sa thermodynamics. Of course, no, logarithmic and exponential equations. Okay, saan magagamit? Actually, halos lahat, no? Uh, even earth sciences, when we discuss the geologic time, and of course, stratifications, uh, stratigraphy no, in rocks, we talk about uh, relative and absolute dating of rocks, which include radioactivity or half-life, no, specifically. So examples. Ano examples? Ayan, no, decay, no? Ano pinakita, pinapakita ko dito? Decay, um, yung pag-decay sa based on half-life ng carbon-14, which is used uh, for uh, archaeological studies as well as for dating, no? Uh, mga archaeological finds natin. And of course, cobalt-60, no? Cobalt-60 is very important for those having uh, treatments ng cancer, no? Yung teletherapy machine na cobalt-60 machine, cobalt-60 ginagamit nun. So, alam mo yung application talaga pag nakikita ng bata, for me, uh, bilang isang learner, I, I think it will spur my interest more in, in doing the math. Okay. For example, also, I gave this in my class, barium 122. Uh, Ginagamit ito sa mga imaging imaging techniques, yung mga barium. Okay. So, for example lang naman yan. And of course, the intensity of sound, di ba? We have to remember that sound is, the, uh, the decibel notation is logarithmic in nature, di ba? This is a good example uh, for logarithm. Of course, pH, no? Uh, grade 7, alam na ng bata ang pH. Pero hindi pa ng bata masyadong gets na ang pH ay logarithmic. So pH is a logarithm, uh, logarithmic function of hydronium ions, no? Di ba yung pH 7, di ba pure water, di ba yung mga ganon? Tapos kapag nasa baba, yung mga acidic, like for example, HCl or uh, uh, rain, coffee, sa taas naman yung mga soapy solutions, yan. So this is a good integration point. Uh, these are some examples. I'll move past them. Of course, no work done in an isothermal volume change. No? So natural logarithm ito. No? So thermodynamics and sa thermochem. Of course, in biology, we have to highlight this part here, which is the exponential growth phase of bacteria, for example, or colonies of certain cells that you actually culture. Diba? So important sa atin yun na ang pag-grow ng culture ay hindi linear. It's actually exponential. No? So ayan, ito yung mga milks na nandun. Represents real uh, situations using exponential functions and so on and so forth. Ang dami, no? Um, ito yung mga mathematics milks para isupport yung ating pag-aaral ng uh, logarithmic and exponential functions with science. So series expansion binomial theorem. Okay, example. Uh, I took this uh, question. It's a challenge problem from uh, Resnick and Holiday. O, oh, ba? Binomial theorem. Pero sa nanggagaling? Sa punto de vista ng relativity. And may relativity tayo sa grade 12 general physics 2. So, pwede nating pag-harmonize yun. Plane angles, solid angles, and plane figures. ba? For example, light. No? In optics, dynamics, and kinematics. Examples lang po. Similar triangles. I remember nung tayo nagsisimula, nung nag-aaral pa ako sa, sa high school, shout out pala sa mga teachers ko nung high school na nanonood. Um, Di ba tinatanong tayo sa earth science yung about kay Eratosthenes when he studied the circumference of the earth? Di ba? In essence, that's, uh, well, the, the math there is very, very heavy. No, I mean, it's a point of integration for math. Di ba? Similar triangles, no? So, special topics pa rin natin siya, no? Uh, pasok pa rin yung ginawa ni Eratosthenes when he calculated the circumference of the earth which is which is barely equal no i mean not, not barely but malapit din no sa katotohanan yung ginawa niya no in other words maganda yung ginawa niya and then here no uh, nakalagay yan sa grade 9 no to apply theorems to show that given triangles are similar and even in grade 5 and then also here no um i find it important na si teacher dapat dinederive niya ang thin lens equation or ang mirror equation. Hindi dapat niya binibigay lang yung equation. Okay? Now, if you will do this derivation by highlighting similar triangles, for example, the triangles uh, ABC and triangles ADE, then you can actually, well, derive here, no? Yung ating thin lens equation, which is in essence a rational algebraic ex expression or algebraic equation. So ayun, no? in grade 9 math, we apply theorems for these triangles. Sa nakikita natin sa science, 
sa grade 10, physical science, and even sa physics 2, sa optics. Saan pa po? I took this from sciencedirect.com. Yung Doppler effect, no? Yung sa sound and even yung sa optical Doppler effect, no? I just show you the picture, di ba? Na kung titignan mo yung mga wave fronts, yung mga yung mga radius nun, no? Pwede mong i-relate doon sa lines that form or the the, the, the legs that form uh, one side or one part of the triangle. Uh, you can look for this. It's a very interesting read using... Um, uh, was this using principles uh, in math, specifically uh, similar triangles. Yun, no? Nabanggit ko na. Okay, frequency for Doppler effect. And yun, Doppler effect pa yan sa physical science. Ayan. Hindi natin tinatanggal yung areas and volumes kasi important sa atin yun. Uh, apart from measurement, for example, you're given a graph. We have to remember that we, if we have an acceleration versus time graph, the area would actually give us a change in velocity, no? Yung, yung bound, no? yung bound area ng curve. And then also, if you have a V versus T graph, that gives you the change in position. So very important. Malaman lang yan ng bata. This is already a powerful tool. Okay? And of course, trigonometric and circular functions. Ayan, yung mahal na mahal nating sine curve. Trigonometric identities when we do, um, let's say, uh, yung sa may kinalaman sa forces, okay, sa mechanics, waves, optics, electricity, and magnetism. Yung binigay ko, it's in a pendulum, no? Yung pendulum bob nagsiswing, uh, the length is L. So you can see the weight of the pendulum, uh, the pendulum bob is here. But at this point, you see the interaction of the vectors, no, of the vector, na meron siyang uh, components along a certain X and a certain Y. Okay? And that uh, certain... Um, component along the y will uh, is actually at an angle theta with respect to the actual weight. Of course, sine and cosine law. No, I, I got this for biology. No, like for example, when you talk about footprints, no, uh, they call it the step angle, which is a measure of walking efficiency. Okay, and of course, conic sections. Patapos na po yung examples to. Ayan, conic sections, astronomy, gas laws. Ano example ko specific? Siyempre si Kepler, no, mahal na mahal natin si Kepler. Nasa general physics ito, nandun ito sa physical science ng core, core subject ng senior high school, at nasa lower grades din siya kasi pinag-uusapan na rin natin ng astronomy sa baba. ba? Yung three laws of planetary motion ni Kepler, in essence, ba? we study ellipses, we study, um, yeah, we study conic sections. So ayun, no, sa STEM pre-calculus, Meron tayong circles, ellipses, parabolas, hyperbolas, and recognize equations. Tapos meron tayo nun sa physical science at meron tayo sa GP1. And of course, sabi ko nga, spiraled across junior high school science. Vectors, no? Paborito din natin to. Um, dapat naiintindihan ng bata yung vector. I'm not going to talk about, you know, biological vectors. So I'm going to talk about physical vectors in the ones that we use in physics. So operations on vectors, na dot, cross products. Examples, defining work as a, as a vector, uh, as a, uh, it's actually a scalar product, no? And then torque as a, uh, as is a vector product. Then, of course, force exerted by a charge on a magnetic, uh, by a magnetic field. Examples lang po ito. Ayan, ano ang punto de vista ng aking pinagsasabi? Actually, had I, had I you know, pag magkaroon pa ako siguro ng maraming time, gusto ko pa itong mas aralin kasi gusto ko mag-offer on a plate Anong pwede natin pag-usapan? Anong convergence or talking points natin? We have to converge all of these things. We have to converge science and math. Bakit? And after some time, we have to observe harmony. Because in essence, they are actually the same. They are actually the same. It's like looking at two things and seeing it differently or telling the story differently but telling the essence of the story in the same way. So um, I would like uh, towards the end, no? I got this uh, from an article uh, by Shirei and Ang sabi niya dito, we have to inter, well, interconnect traditionally isolated mathematics, science, and technology subjects by engaging in, in engineering design challenges. Anong pinagawa niya as outcomes or output sa bata? Tinan niyo, design a portable microscope for a field identification of pathogens on plant life. Ano yung math content, anong science content, and ano yung engineering and technology content? Um, wala tayong output na nag-e-exclude ng skill. Wala tayong output na nag-e-exclude ng content actually. For example, kitang-kita nyo naman dito yung math content and science content. Similarly, if you want to ask them design a food waste system to max, uh, minimize lost food and energy, 
Tingnan natin, meron pa rin siyang math content and science content. So very integrative siya. Yun siguro yung gusto nating i-push forward sa ating pag-uusap na ito. So before I end, no, like few slides, uh, papasalamatan ko lang po ang Philippine Normal University for allowing me to do this. Um, the National Center for Teacher Education, yung, I mean, yung lahat ng, nag, ng tumulong din po. And yung math methods team po namin and some uh, professors who helped me out on this talk. And of course, shout out ko po lahat ng Bicolano, 4A, and NCR teachers. Sobra ko pong love ang 5, 4, at NCR. To end, ganyan po natin nakikita ang science and math. Ganyan din po nakikita ng bata ang science and math. Compartmentalize. Anong natutunan mo sa science? Doon lang yung sa science. What did you learn in math? Doon yung sa math. Pero dapat the math should cross the interface and the science should cross the interface. Hindi ito mangyayari sa bata lang. We have to allow this to happen. So that if we do this, we would allow for investigation, innovation, and sustainability. Yun ang gusto natin makuha ng bata. Um, ano ang direksyon ng math? Ang direksyon ng math now is on inquiry. Okay? Ang math now is moving forward, no? And embracing the ideas of inquiry as well, just like what we do in the sciences. I would like to share, uh, to, to, to thank Dr. Shirley Monterol of UP College of Ed for sharing me this uh, information. And ano yung parang gusto kong sabihin? Sa, sa dinami-dami ng sinabi ko, I, I think on our end as science and math teachers, let's stop first, let's think, let's talk with each other, let's listen to each other, and let's act as one. And then we repeat. Tigil ulit, isip, talk, listen, and act. We do this cyclically or we, we can, you know, move around. The point is we have to listen to each other. Uh, STEM is not science, technology, engineering, mathematics. STEM should be as one. Especially in the higher grades, we should look at STEM as STEM. We should not look at it as, I'm just teaching math, I'm just teaching science. Maaral nyo na yan sa math, maaral to science. No. What if we try to merge these things for better outputs, for better outcomes, for our for our learners, no? Yeah. So I, I guess that will be my key takeaway. We have to be one. Uh, wag na tayo masadong math teacher po ako, physics major po ako. No, let's let's be one. Uh, because at the end of the day, the flexible learning delivery, whatever you do, your SLMs, they will be for the kids, and we're trying to adapt. Okay. So I, I guess yeah. Let's let's push forward for STEM as one. So, yun. Maraming salamat po sa Casio and DepEd Mandaluyong. Uh, patuloy po tayong tutulong sa mga future endeavors, especially on SIP. Uh, salamat po.